Well, welcome back. Here we're going to talk about spinal immobilization seated. One of the things that we're going to be talking about really quickly is that there's been a real change in the spinal immobilization philosophies over the past couple years. Right now, we're going to talk about seated, the KED seated extrication, as well as the long board. But in the future, these are skills that you may not be using as much as we used to in the past. Now, the things that we need to have for this skill station, of course, is we need to have a cervical collar. We'll need to have a KED, which is the Kendrick's extrication device. And what's really interesting about the KED is this was developed by the Kendrick's racing team for their drivers in NASCAR. One of the things that was happening was they were having challenges of getting those NASCAR drivers out of the car as they were ripping it apart. So actually, uh, Kendrick's came up with this device to extricate his drivers out of their cars. And we've been using an EMS for a lot of years. So just a little bit of history there for you. Another thing that we'll need is something to secure the KED to the head. We're going to be using a triangular bandage. And of course, as you come into the skill station, you always want to have your personal protective equipment. Now, we never simulate our personal protective equipment. You always want to utilize it to make sure that you get in the habit of doing it. Again, this is very essential to make sure that you pass the skittle. This is one of those critical areas that if you don't put on your PPE, you fail right away. Now, one of the things that you need to know when it comes to putting on a KED is you could be utilizing this inside a car or with a patient that is seated, as you see here today. So what we're going to do first is we want to go ahead and take manual inline stabilization. I'm going to ask my partner to do that. And what I want to be able to do is I want to make sure that the, the patient is as straight as they can be. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they're as stable and as inline as they can be and I think that that looks okay. Of course everything that you're doing is you want to make sure that you're talking to the patient and you're describing everything that you're going to be doing to them. The next thing we want to do is we want to check CMS. We want to make sure that there's good circulation. We want to make sure that they have good movement and that they can feel us touching them. Remember, as I mentioned before, you don't want to say to the patient, can you feel this, can you feel this? You actually want to say, let me know when you feel me touching you. Because if some reason they don't feel that, now you're going to put them into another level of stress that they don't need to be. So sir, what I'm going to go ahead is I'm going to go ahead and touch you to make sure that you can kind of feel. Let me know when you feel me touching you. You're going to work your way down. You're gonna check pulses bilaterally. Go ahead and wiggle your fingers for me. Let me know when you feel me touching your legs. As you work your way down, go ahead and wiggle your toes for me. Go ahead and lift up your foot. Go ahead and push down. Go ahead and lift up your foot, push down. I'm gonna check good pedal pulses. I have them present. I do. And at this point, your examiner is gonna let you know that you have normal CMS and you're ready to proceed. Remember, CMS is circulatory, motor, and sensory. Now, our partner is doing a great job of holding manual inline stabilization. What we want to do now is set the collar. And one of the things that you want to do when you set the collar is to make sure that it's going to be as comfortable as possible. Let me tell you, this isn't a comfortable process. Whether it's putting it on the patient or whether it's the patient wearing it, it's always going to be something that's a little bit challenging. What you want to make sure is that you measure it the right way. And how do you measure a good C collar? It's from the shoulders with your fingers to the bottom of the ear. And then that's gonna let you know from here to the bottom that you have the right size collar. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the collar on and make it as comfortable as possible. And I really wanna kinda of push my partner out of the way as I put this collar in place. I wanna point something out here before we secure the collar. This happens a lot when you see people putting on an extrication collar is their clothes are underneath the collar. One of the things that this could do is it could cut off circulation as that clothes kind of bunches around and you really want to try to get the collar under the patient's clothes. Unfortunately, this may lead to you having to cut the clothes, but you've got to make it what's best for the patient. And then you want to go ahead and secure the collar. Kind of give it a look. Make sure that it's on right. I think I'm a little bit off, so I want to go ahead and make it a little bit more comfortable. and my partner's gonna kinda of continue to hold manual inline stabilization. Next, we wanna go ahead and place the device behind the patient. Now, look at what we're doing here. We're holding good manual inline stabilization, 
the patient has his back against the uh, backrest of the chair or whatever they're sitting in, how, how do we get them forward now without really disrupting that manual inline process? One of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of use inertia to help us out here. As my partner holds manual stabilization, I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot on the chair. I'm gonna grab the patient behind the knees. I'm gonna ask my partner to count to three and as one unit, I just wanna move the patient forward without really banging them. And really what you're gonna find is this is an easy way to make some space behind the patient as well as to get the device in okay. Now working with my partner, I'm gonna slide it in down. I wanna bring his head collar forward. And now my partner is going to hold the head collar of the cat. The next point, what we wanna do is we wanna now fit this under. You can see that there are kind of armholes that are cut into this. And you wanna go ahead and get that kind of right under that armpit and try to make it as comfortable as possible for the patient. Next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and use your middle strap, your torso strap, and you wanna go ahead and secure that. Now, as we go to tighten this, it's very easy to think, let me just pull this and tighten it. One of the things that you don't wanna do as you pull is you don't wanna jerk the device around. So the way you wanna do it is you kinda of wanna feed this through and you could do it either way that you're feeding it in and then you're pulling rather than jerking. And you wanna make sure that that's snug and fit. Ask the patient if they're having any difficulty breathing, making sure that they're doing okay. One of the things that you need to think about now is there's gonna be a void behind the head. Some patients don't have it and this fits really well. The head does come with a, with a green pad that allows you to kind of pad behind their head. You could do this a couple ways. You could actually bend the pad and actually set it in place, again, with your partner's help to make sure that you keep manual inline stabilization and kind of use that as needed. The next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to secure the head to the device. Some KEDs come with straps that will allow you to secure it. If you don't have straps, you could use a triangular bandage as well. Again, working with your partner to make sure that there's good manual inline stabilization. We want to go ahead and tie this in a knot. Make sure that the patient is comfortable at all times, sir. Any discomfort? You doing okay? Always verbalize to the patient. Next thing that we want to do is we want to move the patient to the longboard. After we get the patient on the longboard, we want to go ahead and check sensory, motor, and circulation again, CMS. One of the things that you got to remember is you had good CMS before you put the device on. If at any time the patient loses mobilization, if they lose any sensation, if they start to feel tingling or lose their pulses, you've got to take the device off and start all over again. Now that you've been through the skill, let's take a look at the critical criteria for this skill. When you're participating in a skill evaluation, you will be given points for each of the steps of the skill that you complete. Note that failure to adequately complete any one of the critical criteria will cause you to fail that particular skill examination, regardless of your overall points scored. Go ahead and take out your National Registry skill sheet and follow along with me. Here's the critical criteria for this skill.
Please remember that this video is intended to help you prepare for the National Registry Psychomotor Skills Examination and the approach may not exactly match protocols used in a different context. It's important, however, that you memorize each step of the skill in order. This way, you're able to demonstrate the skill to your instructor, preceptor, and evaluator.